What's going on YouTube? Dave here from SignalWarrant.com. Hey, it's been a while. I've been tied up on another project for the last few weeks, but here I am back on the YouTube. So today we're going to talk about uh, a common problem that I have had in various organizations that I've been in, keeping track of hardware. So once we create an image for a laptop and we give it to user A, and user A takes it in, into their office or location, puts it on the network, X number of months or years go by, and somebody shows up at the help desk and says, hey, I need to find this computer. Uh, it needs to be life cycled or whatever. I need to inventory it. I need to put eyes on it. Of course, we don't keep that stuff at the help desk. Uh, probably if you're a good organization, you do, but a lot that I have been in do not. So how can we find that on the network? Well, there are a couple ways that I have found. Uh, option one is using the Get Child item in PowerShell, and all you're going to do is look at the user profiles, and you're going to grab the one with the last write time. So that should theoretically tell you what user logged in the last on this machine and give you the username. And I'll demonstrate this here. I only have one computer on my network, so it's DC1. So there you can see David Hall is the last one to log in and logged in today. So that's an option. Doesn't always work well if you have the same user logging in to the same machine over an extended period of time. Something about the profile is not always written or the last write time is not always updated. I don't know what the deal is with that, but it'll get you in the right direction. So another option, uh, we can look at who the owner of the Explorer process is. So to do this, we're going to use the get WMI object, use the Win32 process class. We're going to uh, run this on DC1, the computer. And all we want to do is select the name and match the process Explorer. So if somebody logs in, they're going to have a process, or an Explorer process running under that particular user. Okay, so we're going to use this little commandlet here. Let's run this thing. So that gives us all of this information. At first glance, you can't really even see what we're looking for, the owner of a particular process. To find out the owner, you're going to have to pipe this to git member. So git member, the git member command that's going to give you all the available properties, um, functions, and methods for this particular WMI object uh, commandlet. So let's hit it. Okay, so we can see all the properties here, not what I'm interested in. So if you take a look at the methods, we have a get owner method. So that's probably going to give us what we want. So we'll take get member back off. We're going to enclose this whole command in brackets. And then we're going to call that get owner method. So that'll run this command and access the get owner method to show us who owns uh, this on that on that target machine. So now you can see we have the user Jerome Bettis because Jerome Bettis is the one is the username that is uh, signed in there right now. We don't want all this other stuff, so we can go period user. That's just going to give us the username. So now we see that Jerome Bettis is the only username or the only user logged in that machine. Now there is a caveat here, so I'm going to pause. I'm going to log in. I'm going to do switch user on my domain controller. I'm going to log in another user, and we'll demonstrate here what the caveat is. Okay, so now I have two users signed in my domain controller, Jerome Bettis and David Hall. Both users are signed in. I just did a switch user, signed the other one in. Now both of them are signed in. So let's run this again. 
and you'll see it'll give you both users because both users have an explorer process open owned by that particular username. So if you allow switch user in your environment, maybe the second option is not the best to use. It will probably still get you in the right direction, but uh, maybe the first one is a little better for you. Uh, so that's about it. Pretty simple. Uh, a couple ways you can find equipment. If you know the user that it's logged into, you probably know what section or department that user is a part of, or you can easily find that information. Uh, you could also import a list of computers from a text file or a CSV to run this on multiple machines or uh, throughout your whole environment. In fact, I have an inventory script that has this as a part of it. Maybe I'll do the next video on that inventory script. Anyway, enough speaking by me. Thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate your support. Hit the like button, or not the like button, the thumbs up. Like is Facebook, thumbs up YouTube. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. I would really appreciate it.